and it is said that Eugenio Taddeo has a style similar to Marco Rujas. He's much older than his opponent, Mikey Burnett, but the size is very similar, Jeff. Just 10 pounds difference in the weight classes and a couple inches in height, so no reach advantage as we had. They're both short, they're both powerful, and this should start our toughest lightweight tournament ever. For more on it, let's check in with the voice of the Octagon, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, we now begin our lightweight elimination tournament. Beginning with the fighter standing to my left. He is a submission fighter and former freestyle wrestling state champion. He is also a Greco-Roman national champion. He hails from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and is fighting out of the lion's den in Lockford, California. Standing five feet, six inches tall, and weighing in at 170 pounds, please welcome Mike Burnett. And the fighter standing to my right. He is the number one ranked Luta Libra fighter in Brazil and a former Brazilian Vale Tudo champion. Making his first appearance in the United States, he stands five feet, eight inches tall, and weighs in at 160 pounds. Coming all the way from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, please welcome Eugenio Tadio. And when the action begins, our referee for the evening is Big John McCarthy. Oh, yeah. And working this fight still will be Joe Hamilton. Big John will be a big part of our matchups tonight. Mikey Burnett, Eugenio Tadio. Tadio fights with reckless abandon. Mikey Burnett did admit he's got nerves a little, but he's more confident since fighting out of the lion's den. Hamilton backs him up, and we're getting set to get it started. Here's Joe Hamilton. Here we go. The lightweight tournament is underway. Tadio says he doesn't lead with a single foot. He goes either way, but he's definitely leading with his left foot here. His right hand's probably his power hand. He says he's got power with both. Burnett said we both fight a lot alike. We're both grapplers. And to the ground it goes. And Tadio did a great job going under the punch. But Burnett was able to get out, immediately get back to his feet. And slugging, the speed of these guys is so much different than the big guys. Tadio, a very experienced fighter. He's fought two Gracies in his career. The aforementioned battle that Jeff talked about with Henzo Gracie. He also fought against Hoyler Gracie in a private challenge. Which ended in a draw, by the way. Tonight at Mikey Burnett. Some tough competition, and boy, I'll tell you, they're sitting there trading. They are trading. Tadio even adding a few kicks. Time limit on our lightweight tournament, 12 minutes, no overtime. Here we go, to still delivery. Tadio got hit there again. Burnett doing a nice job, throwing heavy leather. And they continue to battle. That is 12 minutes and a three minute overtime, pardon me. We're at 12 minute no overtime. The lightweight tournament, 12 minutes and a three minute overtime. And Burnett really has that guillotine sunk. He's got it sunk. He's got it in a good position here if he can continue to arch his back. Tadio, no stranger to this position. He looks like he wiggled out. Nice job by Tadio. And Tadio, as we mentioned, the Luta Livre has a strong Brazilian jiu-jitsu background, so he's comfortable in the guard. Yes, he is. Burnett spent probably a lot of energy trying to finish with that guillotine choke. He might sit here for a little bit and regather himself before launching offense. Tadio looking to his corner, listening to the advice. This is now the ground game. Tadio with the guard on Burnett. The Octagon, the ultimate finishing school, the ultimate proving ground for the ultimate in combat. 750 square feet, 32 feet across, 5 foot 
Six inches of padded walls on top of a chain link fence. And now we have gone down to the ground, a familiar spot, as you mentioned, for both competitors. Both are very familiar with the guard. It seems as though Burnett is taking his time. He's not rushing anything. That's a key when going against a very experienced fighter who understands guard. And I really do think that he put a lot of energy into that guillotine choke. I mean, he was really arched out, trying to put Tadio away early. I think he might have slowed it down a little bit, catch his breath, make sure he doesn't rush things, and then approach it methodically. You no, know, we have been able, Jeff, in the last couple of days to visit with two Luta Libre fighters. And when they simplify things, they have said it's, it's really a Brazilian jiu-jitsu background with more emphasis on striking. What do they mean? They move more towards the Valley to Do. Traditional Brazilian jiu-jitsu is with a gi. The Luta Libre is without the gi, and they gravitate more towards learning other skills besides just the submission, the mount and the guard. They move on to go ahead and incorporate strikes and such. Much more liberal, I guess, with the skills. So that is the fat path that Tadio has followed. And you saw him early. He wasn't, he wasn't at all bothered to trade with Burnett. And Burnett said he'll stay on his feet until he feels he's in trouble. And that's why he stayed up there punching. He seemed to start to get the better of Tadio there in a number of those flurries. So would you agree that Tadio has good confidence still in submission skills? Oh, without a doubt. I'm sure he's sitting here waiting, but I'm sure Burnett also understands guard and that he is not going to make the most common mistake by wrestlers. He's more of a submission wrestler. And again, he trades, you know, out of the lion's den, so he's had big people come after him. He's worked with Shamrocks, and he's worked with uh, uh, Jerry Bolander as well. Jerry Bolander will fight here this evening, and Bolander has been working a lot with Mikey Burnett. The lion's den is very high on the skills of Mikey Burnett, who just became a, a father five weeks ago with his first child. I asked him if his young son Matthew was going to be a fighter. He said, I hope not. Now he's working on Tadio's ribs here with some big punches. And that guillotine choke really would say Tadio. He was able to slip an arm through it with the arm in there. It disrupts the full pressure going directly to the neck. He was a ground and pound guy, and he's added a lot of technique. But we saw Tadio there using the heel kick to the back of Burnett. That's illegal. There is no kicking on the ground. You're Joe Hamilton saying, no, 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 no. Tadio will be penalized if he does it again. Now, Tadio speaks no English and came in with an interpreter and some of his crew yesterday, and they were quick to point out that he has a style similar to Marco Rujas, who is very fierce and a fearsome competitor here in the octagon. And he has proven he can go long distances, but he trains to, he trains to fit the fight for this one. And for this fight, he knows it's going to go 12 at the three-minute overtime, might be 15, and he wants to blow all that energy out in that amount of time. So he trains to go the distance. Burnett, first time we've really had a chance to see him, we don't know how long he can go and whether or not, you know, he can perform late in the fight. But coming out of the Lions' den, I have a feeling he does. We're at the halfway point, Mike. We are at the halfway point. Six and a half minutes in, a 12-minute time limit with a three-minute overtime. When does conditioning become a factor? does after every major flurry when they go out of a controlled pace to one of a flurry pace and that's more anaerobic to get a few of those together you can get winded and it's harder for your body to catch up so those are the kinds of things you're looking for if you can get him to flurry he's not successful he gets frustrated that's a great time to launch an attack burnett still trying to work and he is active burnett is active but he just can't pass tadio's guard can hear the referee, Joe Hamilton, again, stay busy. If we get to a neutral point where no one has an advantage, they will stand them back up, the fighters. But Joe has not seen that point come so far seven and a half minutes in. Well, Burnett is staying very active on top. He's throwing punches. He's not just laying on his opponent. And 
Tadio isn't tying him up to keep the net from stay throwing busy, those stay busy, punches so Hamilton will let it go. You gotta stay busy. You gotta keep busy. The great Hugo Duarte, another fine Brazilian fighter in the corner of Tadio. Ken Shamrock recently came in to the Lions' den in Lockford, California, from his new career and okay, stop, put stop, some stand leather up, to stand the guys. Up. Mike Burnett your, your and Jerry right Bolander, and there's the pause. And both fighters are brought back up to their feet. Tadio's corner again with Hugo Duarte. Hamilton trying to get Tadio's attention. They're going to restart him on the feet. Not enough action for Joe Hamilton, so we wanted to restart him. Burnett didn't mind to throw punches. You mentioned that earlier, Jeff. Oh, and he delivers a big right. Now an uppercut. Oh, Burnett delivering some drive. Oh, Tadio's getting hit good. Tadio's in trouble. The strength of Burnett they're showing, walking through some of Tadio's punches and hitting him with some big bombs. Tadio Tadio seems a little clumsy, a little fatigued. Eight minutes and 45 seconds in. Stay busy, stay busy, stay just busy. Just over three minutes remaining. Stay busy. And Tadio just took yeah. a flurry yeah. of connected yeah. punches yeah. from Mikey Burnett. And physically, they both spent a lot of energy flurrying. And now you see the result. They got to take a little bit of a break. They're trying to survive. They're trying to catch the win and not just fight out of frustration and desperation, but out of control and logic. Hey, baby, don't rest. Tyler, you can see him. He's having trouble even breathing. That's not resting if you're using out of his mouth as he's trying to breathe. He's really, he is really breathing heavy. Good effort, gentlemen. Good effort, when gentlemen. When they were on the ground, Mikey Burnett also had a lot of rabbit punches to the ribs of Eugenio Tadio. Let's go, let's go. Good effort, both gentlemen. Of Good these effort. Guys, both of these guys have spent some energy. They are giving this audience something to get out of their feet. Oh, a big uppercut. Now Burnett trying to finish off Tadio. And it's over. Mikey Burnett. You're beautiful. Burnett was able You're to walk beautiful. through some of Tadio's punches at the end and connect with some bombs that eventually set up that very last flurry in which Burnett hit him again. Hamilton knew he was in trouble, stopped the fight. That was a good call. These Both these fighters are exhausted. They put out so much energy. The pace was very, very fast the whole time. Really, the only break they took was in that flurry when they went to the fence. They kind of gathered, and then that set up the final flurry and the victory for Burnett. Here's your Dr. Richard Istrico, the chief physician of the Ultimate Fighting Championship, and quickly to take a look at Eugenio Tadio as fighter safety is the ultimate of importance here in the UFC. For the official announcement, let's go into the octagon to the voice, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, the referee has stopped the fight with the winner, Mike Burnett. Let's have a big hand for a very gay challenger. Another Lions Den. Lions